And also sitting with us is uh, Dellen Millard. That's correct. Dellen, can you spell your first name, please? D-E-L-L-E-N. And your last name? Millard, M-I-L-L-A-R-D. Okay, and you also have a middle name, right? Evan. Can you spell that, please? E-V-A-N. Oh, okay, great. Okay. I would ask that each of you acknowledge that you understand this statement as being video and audio taped and you consent to such a tape being made. Is that understood? It's understood. Yep. I understood and I consent. Phil, and there's a camera up here. Yes. Okay, and there's a microphone above your head. Okay. Okay, we're at uh, 22 Division, which is 3699 Bluer Street West, Toronto. Mm -hmm. Uh, this statement will be taken under oath, solemn affirmation, solemn declaration, and will be videotaped. You must understand that it is a criminal offense under Section 139 and 140 of the Criminal Code to obstruct justice or to commit public mischief by making a false statement to police during an investigation. You must further understand that you may be a witness at a trial concerning the events you describe in the statement, and if at that time you recant your statement or claim it to be false, it can and will be used at that trial, and you may, may be liable to prosecution under Section 137 of the Criminal Code for fabricating evidence. Finally, you must understand that you are not obligated to give this statement, and if any words have, any person has by words or acts attempted to persuade you to provide it, you are to disregard those words or acts and only give the statement if you freely choose to do so. Do you understand your right to choose whether or not to make a statement? Yes, I understand that. Do you understand the criminal consequences of making a false statement? Yes, I do. Do you understand the fact that this statement will be videotaped? Yes, I do. And do you choose then to give a statement? Sure, let's do it. Okay. At this time, I'd ask the Commissioner both to administer the oath. You like the oath? Can you be starting with the Bible, sir? Uh, no, I'll be. Nope. Confirming. Okay, confirming. it's McDonald 86920, Commissioner Bolts. So I'm just going to ask you do you, Dellen Millard, solemnly affirm that in this statement you shall tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you, Dora. Okay, Dellen. Um, we're here with respect to an incident that actually happened yesterday, um, Thursday, November 29th, 2012, at, uh, I believe, your home at uh, 5 Maple Gate yes. in Etobicoke. And what I'd like you to do is, is just start from the beginning as to what happened and that brought the police into this uh, incident. From the beginning? Well... well I don't know what time, what happened yesterday, but uh, today I got back to the house um, sometime between 6 and 6.30. Okay, just, just, today is, we're after midnight it's now, Friday. so we're it's Friday, so okay. that's why I say yesterday as far as Thursday. All right, all right, okay. yes, I see. Um, and so Thursday, uh, sometime between 6 and 6.30, I got back to the house. I've been uh, working at our family business in Waterloo. Um, I came in through the side door. That's the door most everybody uses in the house. And um, I opened up the next door, which leads to the cat area of the house. It's the door from the kitchen to the hallway. And then my dog, Petto, was waiting for me there. Um, I walked down the hallway, and I walked to my room, and um, I picked a sweater out of the closet. It had been a cold day, and then I was on my way back to the kitchen to make a snack, and I noticed that my father seemed to still be asleep in bed, which was odd because it was um, late in the afternoon, and so. I poked my head in, and something didn't really seem right um, about the way he was laying. He was laying very stilly. And then I walked into the room, and uh, I saw the blood on the pillow. 
and uh, uh, for a moment I had to leave the room. I actually went back to my room, and uh, I got out my phone, and I walked back into my dad's room, and I called my mother, and I told her what I was seeing. I literally said, I'm standing in my dad's room, and there's blood all over his pillow, and He's dead. And at first, she thought I actually meant um, uh, my dog Petto, because she kept asking about his dog bed. I said, no, not the dog bed, but his, his bed's pillow. She said, well, Petto's not dead. Who's dead? I said, my dad. And she just started screaming on the phone. And, um, And I, well, I stayed on the phone with her for a while. I went out to the front, I left the room, I paced in the front driveway. I stayed with her on the phone for a while. And I tried to get her to take a taxi, but she insisted she drive out. And um, so she drove over and I texted a, um, a friend of mine, Andrew, Andrew Michalski. And I told him that something terrible had happened, and would he please come over, I didn't want to be alone. Uh, and he did. And we waited in the driveway together until my mother got there. Uh, and then she went in the house by herself for less than ten minutes, more than five. And she came back out, and, uh, and she pulled out her phone, and she called the police. Or, well, she dialed 911. And um, the fire truck came first, and then the ambulance, and then squad cars. talked to some of the officers. They asked me when was the last time I spoke with my father. And, um, and what time I came home that day. That's what happened just yesterday. So you were in Waterloo. Mm -hmm. um, where were you in Waterloo? Uh, Waterloo Kitchener International Airport. Uh, we built a hangar there, a large one. And there was all kinds that looked more presentable. So you work for the family business? Yes, I do. The family business is? It's Millard Air uh, Incorporated. And it's um, it's right now being tried, or trying to be reimagined into an MRO, which is a maintenance and repair organization. And it's essentially a garage to bring airplanes, get them fixed. And... Uh, a couple of years ago, we were a hangarage business on Toronto Airport, where we rent hangar space to companies. And now we're, well, we're trying to get into the maintenance side of things. So this is a new endeavor then for the company? Yeah.
how how's that going as far as the, like the new hangar and everything in Kitchener? Um, um it's going. It's, it's stressful. It's uh, it's been about a year and a half of very hard work for everyone involved, and um, we haven't got a contract yet. So, uh, from an accountant standpoint, it's not going well. How long has this business been up and running? Like, well, it's, it's like re like viable to start doing maintenance repair work. We got our license about three weeks ago. Uh, yeah. And it's been over a year of preparation to get to that point. What's your position in the company? Uh, business card doesn't have a title on it, um, but I think legally I'm vice president of the company. Okay, and when when did you go to Kitchener? After 11.30, but probably before 12.30, somewhere in there, right around lunchtime. engineering the hours. If I got home around 6 to 6 30 I would have left Kitchener probably about 4 30 because I stopped in Oakville. Um, I have a friend that comes with me to work and uh, I was dropping him off at home. When was the last time you saw your dad? Two hours ago. Like, um... In bed? No, I mean the last time you saw him alive, sorry. Um, I keep wanting to say yesterday. Um, it would be Wednesday at, uh, about lunchtime. I was just leaving. Uh, he was talking with uh, Robert, Robert Kozlowski, who was our business advisor. And uh, I stopped for a moment um, to put my two cents in on they were talking about one of our managers, uh, John Barnes, who's been difficult to deal with lately. I was basically saying, let's just find somebody that's easier to deal with, because he's holding us back. And uh, my father said, what did he say to that? He said, yeah, maybe, maybe later. And, uh, and I headed out. To Oakville from there. Uh, Lisa, the bookkeeper, was still there when I left. And I think Robert and I left at the same time. That, is that Mark, your friend? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's in Oakville? That's in Oakville. 
pick them up, I drop them off. Sometimes I sleep over. And uh, he comes to work with me as one of them. And Mark's uh, last name? Smitch. Um, S-M-I-C-H. Mm -hmm. Where's Mark live? Uh, he lives in Oakville. <laughs> Uh, I can't give you the exact address. I'll give you a street corner. Okay. Um, just, he lives just off of Old Abbey Lane, very near to Third Line. But his actual street isn't Old Abbey, it's another small side street, but I don't know the name. Okay. Now, to you, your main residence, is that 5 uh, Maple Gate? Officially, it's 307 Riverside. Um, I have an apartment in that building, but I've torn it all apart for renovations. So for the last for the last year, I've lived at Maple Gate with my dad. Where's uh, Riverside? Uh, very near to Blore and Jane. So, um, your mom mentioned a sixplex. Is that that's it? That's a sixplex. Yeah. And your apartment number in three hundred seven. Number two. So, do you live full time at your dad's house right now? Or? Right now, yeah. So, is, is uh, Riverside is it, uh, is it livable in right now, or is it the apartment? Yeah. I don't need that many amenities, so yeah, it's livable, but. The washrooms aren't out. The toilet works. The washrooms aren't hooked up. The walls have just sort of started to be painted. It's getting close. Okay. Um, now your dad's health. Um, <coughs> can you tell me how his health was? Um, well, he, he threw out his back. Uh, it's been a while now. Nine months ago between seven and nine months ago. Um, and that really, really restricted his mobility. He was bedridden for two or three months. And then recently he's been, um, he's been able to drive himself out to Waterloo. And uh, he has an electric scooter there. He goes around the Do you have trouble getting around in the house? Um, trouble as though he can't do it smoothly, or couldn't do it smoothly. It was awkward for him to walk, but he would go around the house no problem. Okay. Um, any other medical problems? strong liver. No. It'd have to be. Pardon me? I said it'd have to be. Why? Uh, he's always liked alcohol. He's always drank lots. And uh, you have to have a strong liver. Now, was your dad a, a big drinker or a regular drinker or an alcoholic? How would you describe him? I don't like to say the word alcohol. It fits. He was a regular drinker uh, every night. And 
more than I could drink. But he was also a regular non-drinker. During the mornings and the days, he wouldn't drink at all. It was always just late at night. And how much would he drink at night? It's It changes over time, all the time. Um, before he hurt his back, he was into whiskey. Mm -hmm. And um, what's the one that's bigger than 2.6? 40? It's like a big glass bottle like that. Mm -hmm. So you probably do one of those in two weeks of whiskey. Um, but then when he hurt his back, he stopped drinking altogether. He actually thought that uh, it wasn't a back problem, that it was a, a kidney problem related to uh, alcohol. And, um, and then more recently, just in the last two months, he's taken up drinking again. And uh, it seems to be wine more. Um, your dad, uh, did he have any guns in the house? In the past, he has definitely. Um, the safe that um, the detectives and officers have seen tonight, uh, he's had that safe as long as I can remember. And he's opened it in front of me maybe three times in my life. And uh, he used to have handguns in it. And the last time he opened it, that I saw, was over three years ago. And it had, yeah, it had a bunch of pistols in it then. So he gave them to Les Beattie? Mm -hmm. My understanding was that uh, Les would take them out in the country somewhere, a friend's property or a family member's property, and just shoot them for fun. Okay. Do you have a number for Les Beattie? Uh, oh, okay. no, wait. I don't have it on my phone. I never call him. But uh, I did give it to an officer tonight because uh, we have a, um, it's not a Rolodex, but it's, it's our own little phone book. So your understanding was your dad didn't have any guns left? No, I didn't think so. Um, now you mentioned the safe. Uh, do you know if there was a combination somewhere for the safe? Or? His lawyer will have the combination. His lawyer would have the combination? I would imagine so. I don't see how he'd ever expect me to open it. Did anyone else ever stay over in the house besides you? Like anyone else ever sleep over in that house? Sometimes Mark would sleep over at my house. And then we'd just go straight to Waterloo from there. Okay. Um, not recently in the last maybe three months, but before that, sometimes I would have parties and people would be, have had too much to drink to drive, so they'd just sleep over in the basement. That was an ever regular. That was a sort of on just a case by case type of thing. What's the whole basement set up for, downstairs? For parties. For parties. Yeah. We tried to make it look like a club. Who set it up like that? I did the interior design stuff for it. You know, the paint colors. And And how often would you have parties? Uh, this year I've had two. Would you advertise them? Or? No. Um, just friends of friends. When was your last party again? Probably like two 
somewhere in the middle of the summer. I don't know what month. When my cousins were over, and they only come in uh, July. It's probably in July. And what takes place, I saw there's Xbox and uh, TVs and stuff like that set up down there. Mm -hmm. And drugs, there's some drugs down there. We smoke pot. Okay. Do you grow it? No. Set up there, what's all that for? That's just a guest room. Just guest rooms? Mm -hmm. There's just the one though, there's not guest rooms. Have the police ever attended there for any of these parties? I think a couple years back we had one get out of control and uh, we had to call the police to get people off the property. How many people usually come? Usually it's 20 or less. Uh, that night it was more like 300 or something. It was somebody posted on Facebook and it just went. Um, doors in the house, are they usually always locked? Yeah. Yeah, they, different doors have different habits. The front door is always dead bolted from the inside. The side door is a combination that locks as soon as you close it. Um, my dad's usually pretty good about going around the house at night to uh, make sure we have wooden stoppers in the sliding doors that feed the back. Okay. Um, your dad's sliding door wasn't locked, and there was no wooden stopper in there, and the screen wasn't locked. Is that? That's not unusual recently. He's been smoking a lot in the house recently. Smoking in the house, or? Yeah, yeah. He didn't used to do that a few years ago, but um, uh, but now he does, and he now he did, and um, he just opened the door. For his room, he lets the cats out there too. We have an enclosure around his bedroom sliding door. It's like a, it's all fenced in. It's for the cats. So they can sort of go outside. Okay, was your dad depressed at all? He had depression in him. Um, he, he carried some great sadness with him throughout life that uh, I never really knew exactly what it was. He never really wanted to share it with me. It wasn't like he was always sad either. Did he get treatment for depression? No. Was he under a lot of stress um, with this new endeavor? Lots. Lots this year. Was there a chance the uh, business was going to fail and? A chance is more than a chance. Is it still a chance or? Oh yeah. Okay. And how how soluble is your dad if the business fails? I'm not sure I understand the question. Well, it, um, like based on the fact that it was your grandfather's malaria company, the mm -hmm. big transportation company, sold his hangars in in Toronto. Yeah. Um, the house and some of his possessions, it's, your dad had amassed a certain amount of wealth and looked like he was pretty successful. So if this business, this new endeavor doesn't fly or it takes a longer time to get off, is your dad going to go bankrupt or? Yeah. Yeah, 
everything that we have is in this business, um, including loans on the house uh, and including a, a large loan from RBC Bank for the business itself. So how long did your dad think that it should, like, the year, the year and a half that it took to get to this point to get the license, was that longer than it should have been? We originally projected nine months and it became a year. Um, and we thought that as soon as we had the license, contracts would be coming in steadily and easily. And we haven't got a contract yet. It hasn't been that long. It's been about, like I said, three weeks. Um, Do you have a three weeks, once you get the license, to wait three weeks for the business to start? That's not a long time. No, it, it's not at all. Uh, it's also, we've spent a lot more than we thought we were going to spend, too. Um, yeah. Okay. Between them. Does your dad own other properties? Um, he's got to own something else. He owns, owns Maple Day. Sorry? The, the house we were at. Yeah. Uh, the hangar. I own Riverside, which is the sixplex. Mm -hmm. I don't think he owns any other properties right now. A vacation property or anything like that? Cottage? No, yeah, he got property um, when his father died. He got his house and uh, a vacation home out in Picton, and they were both sold. How long would your grandfather die? I don't know. Six years? I'm guessing. Um, I noticed some stuff, uh, Robinson helicopter and other stuff. Are you, are you a pilot? I am. Your dad was a pilot, right? Yes, he was. What pilot license? Are you a helicopter pilot? Uh, yeah, I'm a, a helicopter pilot, and I have that at the private license level, which is, do you know the different levels? No. Um, there's one that's just, I forget the name of it, it's just for you and your friends, and there's the private one, which would be for you and multiple friends, like up to eight people, I think. And then there's the commercial level, where you're working for a company, and uh, maybe you're flying tours somewhere, flying executives to oil rig. That's a commercial one. So you're good up to eight people then? I'm good up to eight people, yeah. Okay. And um, are you fly planes as well? I'm not licensed for it anymore because I let that run out, but I know how. Your dad was your dad was a pilot as well, right? He was. Um, uh, out of anybody I've seen, he had the most number of ratings on his license for different aircraft that he could fly. Okay. Was he still flying? No, he hasn't flown in a long time. Um, I think his last check ride was when his father was still alive five or six years ago. Um, when, when you went into your dad's room, okay, and you saw him there today, did you take anything out of the room, touch anything, or move anything? No. You have a housekeeper? Yes. 
her name? Her name is Dina. How often does Dina come? Usually twice a day. What time of the day would she come? Uh, she would come late morning, say between 9 and 10 would be the first time she'd come. And then she'd probably come again around 5 p.m. to 6 p.m. Okay, was that uh, Dina that pulled up when I was mm -hmm. talking to your mom today? Yeah, it was. Okay. And that was a little bit later. That was like, that I don't was know what nine, time. But... That was like 9 o'clock at night. Yeah. We've already been there after since. nine, nine thirty. And had she been there earlier in the day, Jimmy? You know? I noticed that his dinner was served on his desk. So she was probably there around five. If she was there at five, would she? Why would she come back at nine or nine thirty? I don't know. Maybe just to clean up the dishes. But it's neither unusual or usual. It wouldn't surprise me that she'd come at nine at the same time. She doesn't have a, a regular thing to do at that time. She's always come in and out of the house freely whenever she wants. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she lives on Renforth, near Bloor. I noticed a large keyboard in the front hallway where the front door is bolted. A musical keyboard? No, no. Um, oh, a board of keys. Yes. Or, or, I, Those are all vehicles at the Waterloo Airport. They're all at the airport? Yep. Yeah, like... Uh, Except maybe my dad's van key. It might be on there. Okay, so the, those vehicles weren't missing from the home then? So there's like, it looks like uh, sport vehicles. Um. There's a mix. There's about, we got a, we have about 15 vehicles. Um, we got some little cars, a couple Jeeps, a couple trucks, a couple vans. Um, uh, jet skis. And, yeah. and where are they all stored at the hangar as well? They're, they're all at the hangar. That's one of the items that I had to clean off the floor. It didn't look uh, airport enough. Okay. All right, anything else? No, just, uh, did you know if your dad had a girlfriend or anyone involved in his life? Mm -hmm. about, um, about a week ago, mm -hmm. he asked me if, um, if I would be all right with him seeing a woman called Janet. Have you ever met her? No, I've never met her. Uh, I was told that she was a cousin-in-law that he's known his whole life. you say how long he's been dating her? No, but um, we get calls frequently at night and I'm quite sure that it's just her and 
that's been going on for the last year. Do you know where she lives? No. What did you tell your dad when you asked you? I told them that so long as it didn't create any legal issues with me, I wanted him to go find his happiness. And was it ever mentioned again since the answer? Last weekend, he disappeared for two days, and I think he was with her. If your dad has a will. I don't know for certain. I assume he does. Um, you mentioned a lawyer. Do you know who his lawyer is? Um, the firm is Heenan Blakely. H H H E E N A N Blake L E Y. I think that's how I spell it. I'm not sure. And um, Harry Andrew is his first name. Um, do you know where their office is? Or? Somewhere in Toronto. Do you know who the executor of your dad's estate is? Does that mean who distributes who, his who, estate? When who he would died? be in charge of it? Yeah, would he be the lawyer? Or it'll probably be, I would assume it'll be his lawyer and. Not, not the beneficiary, but the yeah. executor or whoever. Oh, um, in charge, you know. No, I, I don't know. Any in term to settle the estate, pay the bills. And I'd just be guessing. It maybe his lawyer, maybe myself. I really don't know. Um, I'm sure at one point it was my mother. I don't know if that's still the case. Okay. Are you? Um, do you have signing authority for the, the business? How about any of his personal affairs? Signing authority? Yeah, like joint on any, on the house or? Uh, there's one account that we're joint on. Um, I've never actually used it though. It was like an in, an in case count, in case something like this happened and then you would have access to? Maybe, yeah. I, I don't know what his thinking was. He was he was big on setting that up. Okay. He made a big deal about it. Yeah. All right. The time is now 2.18 a.m. It's still Friday, November 30th, 2012, and I'm ending this interview. Actually, before I end it, is, is there anything that um, you want to tell us that we might have forgotten to ask you or anything that you remembered that uh, you think that we should know? Any any little detail that you think might be able to help us? I don't know if anything we've talked about has been helpful or not. 
But the evidence collected from all of the murders, the jury quickly found 